You want it? You got it. Reality Radio done right. right. No nonsense, real and raw, just like you like it. He's corrupt, he's inexperienced, and he lies. Broadcasting from a broom closet in the Arizona Lotus Studios, it's Beef Vegan Presents. Yo, we're just going live on the podcast now. Oh, good morning, everybody. Let's get those comments coming, of course, and I'll share them on the screen. Uh, please welcome back Derek. Good morning, Derek. Good morning. All right, we got uh, Bam and Bella popping in here shortly. Uh, hopefully, they'll be in here soon as we're going to get to know them uh, personally, their characters. Uh, I've met them at the Rialto. Bam, of course, calls in all the time. So does Bella. They both listen together as a couple. And I really want to get to know their backstory, how they met, you know, what they do, and everything else so yeah. because they're I'm excited that to meet them yeah it's it's a trip here uh so shout out to everyone who's already commented here uh you got anthony good morning Lindsay. good morning manny everybody i'll play some clips here uh as well so yeah, it's been one of those days um banging things out so we had uh, a couple of segments pre-recorded uh yesterday that we played this morning i was just getting things ready and had derek jump on and uh yeah talked about lizard people abortion rights uh florida man florida ma'am I covered it all talking about the, a guy the whole gamut yeah uh, talk about a guy getting a penis implant and not being able to use his penis i mean what kind of like torture is that dude you know uh, you finally get the massive hog that you've dreamed about and and it uh, don't work Yo, it's would make me say hog. yo energy. Here, I'll uh, I'll send you a little thing, Todd. Um, yeah, uh, be careful what you wish for. I guess was the takeaway. There was a lot of lessons in eight o'clock hour, nine o'clock hour. Just going to be all personality, and hopefully, again, they get here soon. They know what time they're supposed to be here. How you doing, Derek? So you're not working right now, right? You're in between. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's what it is. Mm. I'm on lunch, is what it is. Right. Uh, they, well, Anthony, I don't know why I look defeated. I don't feel defeated. Uh, you know, I've been having uh, conversations with management. I had an interesting conversation with management yesterday. Uh, it wasn't a defeating, uh, you know, conversation, but it's also one that I'm just like tired of having. So we'll see how that works. Uh, and, you know, it's one of those days where, uh, you know, I started talking on the microphone around seven ish. And, and like popping in. So as far as my uh, rhythm, you know, my rhythm isn't a hundred percent there yet. So, uh, but I, I don't even want the juicy details. There's not too many juicy details. I was talking to Derek about it. You know, a lot of it's just frustration of little things. Right? Yeah. Well, so like I'll give an example. Uh, it's, uh, like after the show today, I'm going to immediately go to my manager's, uh, my sales manager's office and tell her to update the sales sheet for the show. Because part of the problem of the argument going into uh, like losing weirdo because of budget issues uh, and, you know, saying that like yesterday, I was told that the budget that I proposed for uh, my manager was approved. And I'm like, well, that's fucking great, dude. Why haven't you given me a penny of that? Like, why are you telling me that this was approved months ago and I have not seen a single dollar of this budget? I spend money out of pocket. So that doesn't make sense to me. Um, and then she talks about per cluster budget or whatever. And that or per station budget, uh, because this station underperforms financially compared to the others. And and that's another argument for another time. But I, I had, uh, you know, a sales sheet that one of our salespeople put together selling Lindy. Um. And it was just uh, not not right. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, first off, I'm, you're just letting somebody know what's going on. Is that what's going on? You're just gonna sit there and stare. Well, no, no. So, uh, <laughs> I just got an email from Drum saying my interviewees are here. I'm like, can you show them oh, back, please? I'm on the air, right? Uh, that's another thing. But anyways, uh, the point was, uh, so I get this show sheet that they sold to Lindy for Thunder Bacon, which again didn't sell anything. This is my client uh, all over again. But it said beef vegan in the morning. On the, on the top, which is not the name of the show, obviously, right? I don't know if anyone understands what the name of the show is, if they could tell what the name of the show is. I don't know if salespeople have any hints to what the name of the show is, you know? Yeah. 
Uh, Beefy in the morning says right, right there, right, right, right. <laughs> and so, I, so I talked to Christian, and I was just like, dude, it's the little things that matter when you're talking to a client. And he's like, oh no, that's a sales manager thing. That's a, that's what it is on all of our files. I'm like, well, that's a that's a problem, right? It, it's a it's small only been problem. Two years, three. I'm coming three up years. on three. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, so not knowing the name of the product that you're selling is a problem uh, when you're selling it, right? So even if it's something as little of a mistake like that, I I think is a reflection in a way that's is not necessarily positive. Good morning, Todd. Good morning, beef vegan. Good morning, yeah. Derek. It's been a minute. Hey, what's up, Todd? Yeah, well, uh, Todd, Derek, and I go way back uh, since the beginning. In fact, Derek, you had a memory pop up uh, on your social media this morning, right? I did, yeah. Uh, I was like 15 years ago. I was leaving to go on a vacation with my family and turning the show over to you. Yep. Yep. And so, and and then what I did was, today is the day, it's April 10th. Uh, and so I made sure to tell Frank, the owner of the station that we're on KWSS up in Phoenix, that I, I would get everything set up and start my show on April 20th, 420. So that way I would never forget what my radio anniversary was. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and I haven't. So this, uh, this 420, which is a Saturday, unfortunately, but on Friday, I should have Kevin Smith in the studio. So it'd be a good way to kind of celebrate it. Um, but nice. this 420, yeah, this 420. Uh, will be my 15 year anniversary uh, hosting a morning show, like leading a morning show, I should say. Killing it on a morning show. That's what I would say. Ah, well, you know, I mean, depending on what uh, you believe as far as the ratings <laughs> and shit like that. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Well, you just, uh, you you entertain me. So that's, that's all I care about in a morning show. I mean, yeah. So. Oh, look at this. Lindsay said, we love you, Beef. Uh, let's know how you can help. We could even do car wash with Valdez, Manny, and you in bikini tops. Damn it, I misread that at first and got excited. Uh, <laughs> <so close. laughs> I thought you were volunteering your services there, Lindsay. Uh, but yeah, that's I'm sure Valdez, Manny, and myself in bikinis uh, would raise some money as well, you know. To put shirts back on. <laughs> yes, uh, that's uh, me. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I wonder if Drum, like, uh, I think Drum still hates me so much that she won't even do the simplest of, uh, uh, like, things where I'm just, can you please send them back um, on the air? Nope. Yeah, she's not going to do that. <sighs> All right, well, hold on. We got one second. Rock One 2.1 KF Megan jam packed on the podcast broadcast. We are live on uh, YouTube.com slash BFegan. Got Todd Marley joining us. Hello. Hey, yes, yeah, so and of course, Derek's still here. And Bam and Bella are in the lobby. I'm hoping somebody would show them back, but uh, I'm going to get them in studio as we're going to get to know Bam and Bella on a personal level. Two of my favorite listeners who call in all the time. We're going to get to know Bam and Bella, play a game, give out some tickets, and have some fun. So you can join us at youtube.com slash or keep it here because more coming up after the latest from Beartooth. This song is called I Was Alive. Clear. All right, I'm going to go grab them because obviously that's just not happening. Because right. <laughs> what other choices do you have? Right, I know. So fantastic. Uh, let's see. Uh, we did music news the other day with Weirdo. In case you missed it, it went like this. Oh, uh, yes, you could tell by that sound that it's time for music news. And you could tell by this sound... I'm Valdez. That it's Friday, and we got Valdez hanging out with us. Uh -huh. Good morning, Valdez. Morning. All right, we got a lot of fun that we're going to get to here. But first, what's going on in the world of music and entertainment, weirdo? Well, Ghost has dropped a trailer on their Twitter that makes lots of references to one very specific horror movie, which is The Exorcist, which is really, really cool. Okay. And everybody's just like, what is this about? But if you remember, not too long ago, we talked about their concert that they banned all cell phone use. Yes. Because they were going to be filming. So the trailer features ominous and imagery and haunting music you know characteristic of ghost style and it showcases snippets of the band's live performances emphasizing their theatrical and energetic stage presence nice and then with a release date coming to cinema cinemas worldwide oh so what is the release date 
Uh, they didn't say. They said it's coming soon. Ah, oh, <laughs> son of a bitch. You did this whole for real. And I'm like, cool. When, uh, when can we see it? When are we going to line up to go see this? And uh, yeah, that's going to be fantastic. So, you know, the concert films, I always thoroughly enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, with Ghost, I imagine it's going to be somewhat psychedelic. Did oh, yeah. And especially when um, right now they are in this transition of they're going to be moving into a new phase, possibly a new album with kind of different imagery, different characters, things like that. So this will kind of end the chapter of Tobias Forge's uh, Papa, oh, I'm not going to say it right. Em Emeritus? Yeah, that's close enough. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I can you, never say it. Yeah. What do you think they're going to do? Go full blown, um, I, I think. What, what's the band? Full blown killers? Like Brandon Flowers from the Killers? Because uh, honestly, I could see him kind of going that route. Well, considering that Kiss just sold their music catalog to another, another Swedish company, maybe that's it. Ghost is coming back as Kiss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the I makeup's mean, not far off. I'm no. just saying. It is an easy Ghost transition. Kiss. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of which, yeah, the, the $300 million deal mm -hmm. was made to buy a uh, Kiss's catalog, but that's not it, right? Right. Their name, it's logo, image, and likenesses to a company called Pop House Entertainment, which is taking over for that Avatar thing that they're going to uh, premiere in 2027. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. And look at Gene Simmons is just loving it up. Oh, but yeah. Everything's been a cash grab since almost day one. Mm -hmm. And now they finally were able to sell. All right. I'm going to interrupt the. Uh, Music news here, and we're going to welcome Bam and Bella. And as you can see on the screen there, we got Todd and D-Rock as well. Here's Bam. Uh, hold on, let me turn you on there, Bam. Hey, hey, and hey. I got Bella right here. Oh, get yeah. Right the mic. Get right up on the mic. Yeah, well, and I got to turn her mic on. So I guess that helps okay. as well. That's the <laughs> girl. Ask a black girl. That's a new hey. segment, right? Here, let's go. Everybody's got to have one of those, man. Yeah. Rock one two point one KF man, welcome back to Beef Vegan Presents. Joining us on the podcast broadcast, uh, two of my favorite listeners. I met them at the Rialto a little while back. Uh, we got Bam and Bella. Good, well, what's morning. Up? Good morning. morning. Hello, Dirty T. Yeah, Dirty T in the house, <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, we got D Rock and uh, D Rock and Todd on the stream as well. Okay. Uh, have a lot of things to cover and stuff. You like my lizard people rant there, yes, Bella? Yes. Good. Yeah. Yes, I, I had that. Conclusion. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I want to get to know ab about you two in general, uh, you know, because you are some of my favorite listeners and stuff. And you guys are a couple, too, right? Yeah. 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 We've been together like eight years. Yeah. You've been together like eight years. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, when did you guys meet? Well, we mm -hmm. met like about eight years ago. Um, I was in a relationship for like 20 years. Okay. You know? okay. So I got off a real bad breakup and I went two years without being with anybody. Then I decided to try plenty of fish. My friend, my friend's like, dude, you can hook up with someone tonight, dude. And because I was all heartbroken and stuff. And so I tried fish face, you know, and, and then I run into her on it. She's like the only one I was attracted to. And so we ended up like just hitting it off big time. Slim man. picking. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the fish that you were in that. Did you score the first night? No, no. I, we, we were old school, man. I, I I brought the gentleman thing. I did give her an Uzi, though. I gave her an, an Uzi. Oh, yeah. He's so like, I got a gift for you. Uh, and this was like the first day. That we were meeting the first day, you I'm got like, it. oh gosh, this guy's crazy. He got an and then, Uzi, yeah. He pulled out like this play gun, and I was like, okay, who? Like, <laughs> well, I gave it know? to her, I gave it to her so she has here. You can shoot me if you don't if you make you feel comfortable, so you don't have to worry about. Like, <laughs> I did try to touch my boob on the first night, though. Remember, you did yeah. try to touch the boob yeah, on the first night, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. We ended up wait. kissing, we ended up kissing a little bit, but like, <laughs> but like, it was like the next night, we were like. We were, like kissed all the way through a movie, and we waited a week or two or something like that to have sex. But yeah, it became, but, like, okay. So how did he try to grab the boob? What was the move well, to try to like, grab the boob he first? He actually thing? asked me. Oh, <laughs> that's like, where you messed you up. Your breath? <laughs> like no, no. Because <laughs> <laughs> you take away all the romantic uh, aspect of it. It's gradually yeah. kind of work your way up. Yeah, that. But, then, but then two days later, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had no game at the time. I, I didn't think, you know what I mean? But you, know. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> okay, so the, back to this Uzi thing. It was a toy Uzi. Yeah, and so Uzi. the it was it was kind of like the joke. We're saying, hey, if you you know, just to make you feel more comfortable, yeah, right. sure. here's an assault weapon. <laughs> yeah. And you can use it on me at any given time. But of course, uh it was a toy, so it wasn't gonna do really real damage. Yeah, but, but, it made um, me feel comfortable, especially because like there were a couple of people I'd already on on there that were kind of, you know. Yeah, dude. Yeah, maybe weird. Uh, I get it. You know, I mean, <laughs> uh, dating is a scary thing. And honestly, I've never been on, I've never been on a, a, a dating website ever. So I didn't know what to expect. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, Plenty of Fish is a weird one, too. And I, I was on Plenty of Fish back in the day. So uh, my only good match where it was quality match was someone I didn't even see on there. She saw me. Her profile was kind of private, and she reached out to me. It nice. uh, turned out to be, you know, an uh, amazing girl, was, but was I before, ended up messing up. Was this before? <laughs> did, she, did she know you were a DJ? You were a DJ back then, were you? No, I was. You I was. Were in uh, Phoenix? Yeah, no, I was, here in, I was here in Tucson. It's when I moved down in Tucson. Okay. And, uh, and you know what? Honestly, secretly, I think she did know who I was, and that's what happened. Uh, and it was a nice little relationship, but like I said, I messed it up and whatever. She's doing fine now. Uh, but, <laughs> but I still think that's somewhat like oddly romantic and smooth for you to present her as strange as it is with a toy Uzi. Was it like a squirt gun? Uh, it was about this big. It was one of the, you, you it made it sounds. It clicks, you know, it has a wheel in there. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and he yeah. took me to the skate park on our first. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, the princess. I know, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I like that too. Now, uh, um, do you still have the toy Uzi, Bella? Yeah, I do. Nice. Look at that. Eight <laughs> years old. Do you have it like in a special place? No, it's in a box somewhere, but yeah. Yeah. We moved it a couple times, so it's got put up. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, do you still buy toy guns? <laughs> Try to buy real, real, real ones when I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not terrifying at all. <laughs> Wait, let's talk uh, about the time when you were like trying to show me how to shoot in the in the house when we were in your house. Shit, I yeah. forgot about, oh yeah, that's, yeah. that's okay. It's okay, dude. <laughs> Put a bullet. Show yeah. strike. Sure. Real quick, real quick. Of, uh, <laughs> let me see what's on your hand. Show the camera. It's Camera's right it, up there. Where's it? At? Oh. Okay. So this is your no ish. <laughs> this is no ish. But I have words that I can't say. Darn heck. Uh, damn. Holy cow. And shoot. <laughs> oh, nice. You got a cheat sheet yeah. of a substitute curse words that <laughs> yeah. you can <could> say. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, we're keeping the conversation moving with uh, Bam and Bella on the podcast broadcast stream. Uh, we're gonna get to know them more and catch up, and then we'll play a little game and things like that. So Together. you can join us YouTube.com/slash Beef Vegan, or just keep it right here because music's on the way from Pearl Jam. It's Rock One Two Point One. <laughs> yeah, just first S bomb. First S bomb. How many? What's the over under, guys, on the stream? How many uh, curse uh, curses will Bam accidentally squeeze out uh, <laughs> on the air? <laughs> Only on the air. And, uh, the podcast doesn't count, uh, but we'll squeeze out on the air. Um, we got, what, I think, three more on air segments before the show's over. Okay. <laughs> Nick says six. I mean, that's a lot. Damn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Now, Lindsay said, I refuse to do online dating. Too many creep dudes. And they all started uh, started off with triple X, right? Oh, okay. so, <laughs> that's not good. You got any horror oh, yeah. stories of doing online dating, Bella? I know it's been a while. Um, I would just say there's this one guy that I saw a couple times. And when I when we pulled up to my house, he's like, oh, yeah, I, I know. I know exactly where this is at. I've, I've been around here before. And I was like, oh okay and then so everything was okay i wasn't really feeling them but then he calls me up and he's like yeah i bought tickets to the stephen marley concert and then he gets into how he wants me to pay for half of it uh, now look i don't have a problem paying my own way but like you don't ask me on a date you don't buy tickets and then say <laughs> oh yeah you can pay for half of it we got in a huge i was like dude i can't yeah 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 that's a we're fail done. that's and a don't fail. come Kick by my rocks. house don't be walking by here either Right. Uh, what attracted you to Bam besides the Uzi? Uh, you know, <laughs> um, I'd say Wild Child. She, she gave me the name Bam. I, I wasn't Bam before I met her. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, so why'd you give him the name Bam? Lot motorcross, a lot of bumps. bumps yeah, yeah. And, you know, he's always <laughs> bumping into walls or yeah. just key bumps Freaking stuff and yeah, yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> kind of rough and tumble. Child. Yeah. But I got a big heart though. <laughs> yeah, I could tell. I could tell. And because he sang like the first like on the first date, like while we're in the car, I was like, I've never had a guy sing like just. Did you serenade loud. her, dude? I wasn't really he was singing. just doing it to the music. And I was like, yeah. whoa. Like, I was just singing along with the radio. It was like <laughs> showing that he had confidence, I guess. I was like, wow, that's it what was the song. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. That I I I don't maybe I don't. maybe classic rock maybe maybe it's Kevin me I don't know yeah <laughs> yeah I'm sure it was a radio song I know, I know a lot it wasn't of songs. Prince but um he's yeah done I'm a that big too. Prince fan and I, I was, <laughs> we I done that a million times <laughs> did he belt it out like no oh yeah he belted it out and <laughs> like, I was like whoa. 
like, okay, check this. Yeah. Out. And his voice was <laughs> good. So it was like, yeah, it was not bad. Were you ever a lead singer in a band, Bam? No, but I, I mean, I dabble in music and stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, I like to sing. So, but I've never been in a band, but I, I do make music on my own, like just, you know, part time stuff. I'm trying to get some more time to do that i just kind of like all over the place but i did i i i'm really shy like i, I didn't have confidence in myself but like she says i should just pursue it and if, even if it goes nowhere I, I still i have to do it for myself you know absolutely as an outlet as a creative outlet yeah, exactly. and yeah whether exactly. whether or not you know uh you put it out there for people to hear or not it doesn't even matter dude can i get some water dog uh yeah let's, wow. let's see i don't know if i have too many here what i do have i'll tell you what uh, I'll play a clip. Uh, I'll get you guys. Situated. <laughs> I just want to be looking about that. There's cups right there, right? Yeah, and then there's a care. water machine uh, around the corner. Perfect. Yeah. So we'll get. Let's get them set up, and I'll uh, play a clip from earlier, and then we'll have more with uh, Bam and Bella. Uh, let's see, Modern Day Oceans. What was that? Well, you know, it'll get weird with Weirdo uh, because it is a Wednesday. So here's a clip from the past. We got more coming up here with Bam and Bella right after this. Stick around. <laughs> Cool, thank Jimmy, you. World of Rock One 2.1 KFMA. You found some weird news on the internet. I did. All right, what do you got for me? Well, you know, we have the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile. Yep. Well, Planters is definitely digging in on the game as well. Oh, yeah? How yeah, so? Yeah. You, you, they are looking for three people to hire to drive around the Nutmobile. Nutmobile? Mm-hmm. Ridiculous. That's <laughs> what I used to call my 88 Nissan Maxima in high school. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> that nut milk wheel saw some good times. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, it had a moonroof and everything. Uh, anyways, tell me about the planners nut mobile. All right. So applications are now being accepted at BAPnutter.com. So that's what you would be called. If you get hired for this job, you're going to be a peanutter. <laughs> it just gets worse and worse. And so, yeah. So basically, it's going to be going around the country for one year in the nutmobile. The three people are being sought for uh, the one year gig, and it's supposed to be fun, creative, carefree, and in search of life's. Next nutty adventure. Yes, yes, gotta live nutty. How much does your dignity cost? I don't know. How much is the salaries uh, on this? Yeah, I mean, I know a few people in my personal life that would uh, jump at the opportunity to be a peanutter. I I know particularly one. Yeah, okay. I think we're thinking (laughs) of the same person for sure. Yeah. He's a nutty buddy for Mm -hmm. sure. But uh, okay, so that's available right now. So either you could drive uh, drive around in a giant wiener or you could drive (laughs) around in a nut. Uh, Your choice. Take your choice. Yeah, but you need a bachelor's degree, by the way. Of course you do. You need a bachelor's degree, a valid driver's license, excellent written and verbal communication skills, you need some media experience as well hmm. because like this is going to include like uh, being a grand marshal of parades, again, doing media interviews and entertaining up to millions and millions of people across the country. How ridiculous. So like, can you answer the same st- stupid questions <laughs> over and over again? Right. And this job might be for you because right. honestly, like if we were to interview the peanutters, I could just imagine uh, some of the stupid questions I could come up with for oh my God. any of those nutty people. Oh, we, we got to do this. We got to interview them. They got to hire them first. Right. Let's get them hired and then we're going to interview them. Oh, all the jokes. Oh, so many jokes. Okay. Get over it. What's the next story? (laughs) Uh, So there is in Albany or New York, they are having an issue of um, some smells that they're trying to figure out. And it's specifically flatulence and urine. Yeah. Yeah. And they have no idea where it's coming from. Uh, Smells like a fraternity row. (laughs) <laughs> Down here, U of A, right? <laughs> yeah. So in the capital region, since September, this foul odor has just been going around Albany, and they have no idea where it's coming from. To the point that the Department of Environmental Conservation is going to try to solve this issue, and they are investigating. Yeah, I'm sure. So the people in Albany are looking around and be like, "Why do we smell like New Jersey?" <laughs> Gross. Uh, what else you got in weird news? <laughs> well, uh, you know, the the sex toy game is is very, very competitive. Uh-huh. And right now there is two companies that are kind of going at war with each other because one is accusing the other one of bootlegging. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is the thing. Now, bootleg used to be a, a, a like a big business during a time of uh, prohibition uh, right. for like moonshine mm-hmm. and alcohol in, in general. So now there's sex toy bootlegging there going is. on in 2024. Yeah. So there is a company called Bad Dragon Enterprises and they make fantasy themed sex toys. 
And they are accusing the company Sin Saint of illegally copying their distinctive Dilly designs and infringed on copyrights for products like Spritz the Sea Dragon <laughs> and Tyson the Water Buffalo. Oh, that's funny. Well, at least their Dillies are like animals and they could, they have some sort of uh, lawsuit, I'm guessing. And it's not just like a lifelike phallus because they'd be like mm -hmm. that vein is our vein you know <laughs> like how do you how do you copyright that exactly oh. yeah so yeah so bad dragon says that they've archived significant commercial success in the world of adult toys and accuses sensei of selling duplicative dillies through their website and other trade channels all right personal question have you uh, utilized or uh, have any experience with any of the products mentioned in said story no okay but my girlfriend and i were having a conversation with these type of toys last night yeah so because it's, it's it's a whole genre yeah this is there an appeal there to something that of course is phallic based but also like a uh, wrapped around in fantasy right mm -hmm. like it's a dragon dilly so it looks like a dragon but it's also has like the right size and measurements mm -hmm. for you to be able to have fun with well the one we were specifically talking about last night and giggling about because we're considered in polyamory unicorns yes um we were talking about the unicorn one and it's basically this like rainbow that has this like braid yes on it okay so or th that is made of this braid so you know you get some good texture in there okay mm -hmm. right but then a very skinny tip that'll work uh i guess we can't go into details yeah on no that. we can't <laughs> but i am curious in case you couldn't tell you know I'm like oh, mm -hmm. oh okay yeah all right so uh let me ask you this if i put a pair of like bunny ears on my manhood would that make it more appealing to the opposite sex not to me ah. that's too much all right, what kind of ears would work <laughs> for you? <laughs> Elephant ears? Oh God. Okay, okay. Right. Well, that's that's a lot to live up to, anyways. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you get back to me on that. But excellent mm -hmm. job, weird news. Oh, well, let's hit the reset. We. All right, I'll please welcome back to the show. Now, obviously, this is not Bam and Bella. Uh, there's, uh, let me reintroduce or let introduce you my guests who are putting on the huge May the Fourth Be With You event, and we're going to talk about this on the air. Uh, but right now, of course, we're on the stream. And I put Derek uh, backstage as well. And it was my fault because uh, the emails and stuff must have got confused. But I was walking past Andy and Dan in the lobby. I must have walked past you guys at least three separate times. <laughs> well, they you told know? us, yeah. we told us, they did. Hey, just his name is Brett. I'm like, who's Brett? Nobody knows who Brett is. Right. <laughs> who the hell told you who, Brett? Who the hell's Brett? Oh, your boy Ali said. Yeah. Uh, if, you wanna, if you want to give him any crap, yes, call him Brett. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we've been calling him Brad in the hallway, and he doesn't respond. What the heck? No, no, my friends call me Beef. So if you're calling <laughs> me Brad, I'm like, uh, you seem like a, I don't know, like a tax collector or something. Yes, right, right. Like, like, coming Am I after signing him. something? Are you giving me a package here? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I apologize because no, I did see you guys. You guys no, are no. Uh, kind of quiet in the lobby. Didn't want to interrupt. I assumed you were going to be on Frank's show, but you're part of what we call the Morning Show Gauntlet. So yes. uh, you've been hitting up every show. Uh, of course, to promote the big event, which we've been promoting on the air and people are super excited about is the Centurions party here in May. That's uh, featuring Smash Mouth. That's great to hear. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yep. And, and Smash Mouth, like we have a little history with Smash Mouth, too. We've been doing what we call like the Smash Mouth challenge. You could you could sing all stars pretty much to like any right. popular song. <laughs> right. So we've done some, you know, performances on this and right. posted some clips and Smash Mouth has, in fact, actually shared it to their fan base and oh killer uh, yeah so just awesome. seeing them on there is, is good and, uh yeah that's they're I mean, a great band they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna be great yeah for our event. it's guaranteed that they're a great band too now rest in peace steve harwell the lead singer right, right. but unfortunately they was getting kind of a bad rap because yep. his demons were you yes. know uh right. overtaking him so it wasn't guaranteed the smash off would right. put on a good performance now they're all pros. They're all on the same page. Yes. And they're going to deliver the catalog that people know and love. And I know that it's going to be a fun time. So let's get on the air. Rock One 2.1 KFMA. Welcome back to Beef Vegan Presents. Uh, please welcome uh, my belated guest who I pushed back a half hour uh, just to be uh, a jerk, apparently. Uh, okay, Andy <laughs> Brown, Dan Nental from the Centurions. Now, we've been talking about this all week long, the May the 4th event that's happening at the TCC. And I've, I've said on the air, and I'll say it again, uh, the massiveness of a Centurion event which is a, a fundraising event, yes. but it's really just a party, a massive party that people get to dress up for, uh, get to go out and enjoy, uh, get wildly entertained with live music, casino, food, bar, uh, right. and then, of course, theme. And since this is landing on May 4th, 
why not use Star Wars? Yeah. May the 4th be with you. We're calling it the Great Death Star Infiltration Celebration. Oh, I love it. We're going to we're gonna transform the TCC and just into the Death Star. We're going to let you party inside the Death Star. We're going to let you rock out with the Stormtroopers, right? Play some play some casino games and listen to Smash Mouth. Yeah, that's amazing, dude. And you know what's crazy, too? Usually you do the uh, Kino Stadium. Yep, we've done it outside for a long time. And you know what? Centurion's been around 56 years. Wow. We've been doing this for a long time. Eight Over $8 million raised for local charities, for kids, um, health, mentoring, education. So it's actually a great cause. Come out, have fun, support local charities, dress up, whether you are Princess Leia or you're a Darth Vader. Come on out and have a good time. And there's so many different Star Wars characters oh, yeah. now with oh, the Disney universe expanding. It's gotten crazy. That's I mean, it's a no brainer for us. When we saw the date. We're like, we got to do May the Fourth be with you. Yeah. There's so many generations now that love Star Wars in some capacity, and you know. Now, was it weather or opportunity that led you to move this uh, party into the TCC as Ooh, opposed to Kino Stadium? It's opportunity. I worked for a few years at the TCC. Still know them quite well. Um, Rio Nuevo was a big influence. Um, we wanted to make a change um, inside in May, wear some costumes. What It's a, it's a no brainer. You're yeah. inside air conditioning. So we want to try something different. Um, we're hoping it works out and gives us an opportunity because this party's gotten so big. Yeah. There's only a few places we can do it. Right. Yeah. What's the average of people that uh, come to a Centurion party? I know it's my, my mom's casino company provides the casino for this. Yeah. So, you know, I have like a personal connection to this and I'll also go around dealing craps and blackjack at these events, helping raise money. And I have a blast doing it. Uh, and it's a lot of tables. So yeah. she, it's a big operation <laughs> that she's bringing down. Uh, on average, what do you see go through like the turnstile for We've, these events? We're about six to 7,000 people at a party now. Nice. Last year, we were close to eight. We're hoping to hit 10 this year. Yep. If you, we hit 10, that'd be great. You know what you created this year that's different than uh, previous years? Uh, Comic Con with alcohol. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you did. You know, utilizing the yeah. convention center, which we, we have the Comic Cons sure, at, and, and all of the convention centers all over the country, same thing. But you gave that party element to it with that sci fi aspect, which again, just a blend of both worlds. It's that's a uh, that's going to be a vibe. Yeah, we're going to have some uh, Comic Con judges out there for our costume contest. Okay. So you're doing a costume contest. Yes. What's the prize for that? Oh, we got some uh, prizes, actually, some Comic Con tickets for it, but there's always cash prizes. There's also some raffle prizes we give away so come on down your best outfit we do different levels we do of singles we do doubles and we do groups oh so nice there's different uh different categories there that's amazing yeah, yeah. and then uh, you're gonna have food out there right so different food. vendors with some of your uh, vendors that well, you got on board actually yeah, you just hit the nail on the head comic-con actually you get to have a few cocktails but now throw in that you get a meal provided to you you can do some gambling you get to watch an amazing band after that, it's an amazing DJ. If you if Smash Mouth for some heaven forbid reason is not your thing, there's a DJ around the other side of the party where you can do some techno dancing, things like that. You can do a silent auction on some amazing things. Andy can uh, has some guys made things that are about the size of a football helmet that are just amazing things. Of, if you're a Star Wars guy, you want to go buy those. There's some stuff. nice collectibles being made for our raffles. Oh, I our bet. So there's some really cool stuff being out being out there. And people are out of the woodwork. They just want another reason to wear their costume. Yeah. You know what? I know. They uh, they load up in these costumes. They can only break them out two times a year. Halloween right. and yeah. Comic-Con. Now yeah. it's a now third it's time of year. So bring them I mean, on. Bars open at 6. We have specialty drinks. We actually have a local band called Swigfoot that's going to open up for Smash Mouth, a good friend of ours. Nice. Casino is open from pretty much 7 to 10. There's VIP tickets if you want to be able to sit down and have some other food brought to you. I mean... This is a, like you said, you, I think that's a great way to say it. This is Comic-Con with a concert, with drinks, and fun. Yeah, absolutely. And, all, and it all raises money for charity. So TMC for Children yeah. is our big beneficiary this year and always has been for the last five years. Right. So do it but for the kids. Do it for the kids. There's other ones, uh, Assistance League. We have Courtney's Courage and Candlelighters. They're all, they're all great organizations that focus on treating the family, not just the kid who's been inflicted with a, a disease or something. So it's, it's, it's a great opportunity to get involved. And still have fun. I nice. Yeah. Well, let's talk about these ticket packages then. Uh, so to get involved, if people want to go, uh, you got GA, you got VIP. Uh, what are is there different uh, categories here? Yeah. So it's gen general mission, one hundred twenty five dollars. Um, Thecenturians.com. Go on the website. And what does that include? Just access. That and includes access, your Smash Mouth ticket, your food, your drinks, your twenty five dollar voucher to the casino table. It's a full night right there. Yeah. So you get food, drinks, entertainment casino 
I mean, whatever you want. There's an outdoor venue. If it's a cigar bar, I mean, whatever you want to do, you can get it done. I mean, there's there's special events where you can play some games. Where you can make a night of it and have a great time, and and all the while feel good about giving money back. Indoor, outdoor uh, festival as a little bit of feel, yeah, yeah. So 125 bucks is your general admission ticket, and it goes up from there. Um, VIP is 250. You get an upgraded food. You get a special. We have a special event plan for VIPs and suite holders. It's their own entrance, their own VIP entrance, if you will. Nice. Basically, it's a backstage area. When you come through, you'll have an old experience for you. Um, I guarantee there'll be some smoke. There'll be some lasers. There might even be a Darth Vader. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so the May the 4th event that the Centurions are throwing that aims to be the biggest and best yet, and you can get your information, your tickets at their website. TheCenturions.com. Excellent. And, of course, that goes down May 4th. The rest of this week, we're going to continue to give you opportunities to win tickets so you can go to this event. Uh, but if you don't want to take your chances, obviously you can buy those tickets. And just remember that proceeds benefit TMC children. So they benefit charity. So it's going for a great cause. And you could possibly even write that off just in time before. Or to file your taxes at the very last minute. There you go. Uh, well, Dan and Andy, thank you guys so much for Appreciate giving me the time. rundown. And I'll see you on May 4th yes, at the will. Craps Tables. Yes, sir. We're going to keep the conversation moving on the podcast broadcast. Be back with more with Bam and Bella after music from STP. It's Rock 1 2.1. Clear. Excellent. Thank you guys so much, yeah, man, dude. Yeah, All right, we're going to reset them, and uh, we'll be right back here. Now, they, they have threatened that they were, you know, finishing up and doing their final tours right and, and that went on for seemingly my entire like adult life 15 years uh but now <laughs> with with them literally selling off all the name rights mm-hmm. and likeness rights and even the uh the copyright on the makeup styles as Perfect. well that means done, done, and they, done. they're done done and then somebody else is going to do it so you're still going to be able to see kiss but it's going to be just some other people who are probably younger and can perform <laughs> a little better a little bit I'm, more muscle definition. I love hating on Kiss. I'm just seriously, and that's just for Razor, you know, because he just loves him so much. Yeah, he does. I like Razor too, but I just like to, you know, be like, ah, Kiss sucks. You know who's really cool? A modern day Kiss? ICP. Yeah, that's right. They are a modern no. day Kiss. Yes, and no. I guarantee you, once Violent, uh, Violent J and Shaggy Q uh. decide to do the same deal, they're going to get $400 million. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of juggalos out there, that's for sure. All right, uh, anything else in music news? Uh, we might have some new Nine Inch Nails on the horizon. Nice, okay. Yeah, so their last release was in 2020. And uh, Trent Reznor and um, Atticus Ross, they've been really busy. They've been working on, like, scores for uh, for movies and working on a new TV show as well with uh, the creator of The Bear. Oh, oh nice. Yeah, yeah. and oh. they're also working on a horror film a clothing line, a new record label, and a music festival. So pretty much over the next year or two, we're going to hear nothing but Nine Inch Nails and everything that they're doing. Well, hopefully they have a team because that sounds like too much. I mean, uh, basically Trent... So much. Trem Reznor is sounding like powers now. He <laughs> tries to do like a hundred things at once and doesn't get any of them done. <laughs> he's like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm going over here, going up there. Yeah. Like, Whoa, dude, focus. And then complaining how streaming services are ruining the music industry. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> They're even doing a collaboration with Epic Games. Oh, wow. My God. What's the game going to be? No idea. It just says collaboration with Epic Games. What would so you probably providing music? Or you have to go around effing things like an animal. Ah, yeah, there, there you go. go. That's a disturbing <laughs> game there, Valdez. And he's here for yeah. it. I mean, I'll only stream <laughs> that for free. I would not spend money on that. <laughs> All right. Let's hit the reset. We got Valdez in the studio. Confession session. We'll play some games. And you're listening for the Black Keys. Because when that is played, be caller number 69 to win tickets to see them live. All that and more coming up next on Rock 1 2.1. I've been, I appreciate I'm that. Yeah. It took a. It was a long run for sure. I had to take the long way. Uh, welcome back, Derek. And yeah, so here, real quick, just to fill you guys in, and the reason why I had Pam and Bella step out is because when, when I walked them out to get them water, uh, Andrew, the producer for ESPN, was like, "Hey, man, those those guys have been waiting for you for like forty five minutes." <laughs> I was like, "Oh shit, they're for me!" Like, whoa, whoa. like who, who told me that, dude? I totally forgot about that. And they were the, obviously the Centurions. Uh, oh, Centurions. I, I know. It's, yeah. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Larry Stern. He's a good friend. I was actually working at his house uh, yesterday. He's, he, was like, he was like a, the, the director of the Centurions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. They're, they're kind of like a social group of yeah. sorts. It's kind of like a fraternity that yeah, yeah. those parties uh, under the guise of raising money, but they booked my mom. 
for the casino parties uh -huh. and it's always massive and my mom i mean honestly i'm just like why are you doing such a big ass event dude uh because she comes out for phoenix for it and it's like 40 tables uh and a lot and and then sometimes so she'll always ask me to help work it because she'll always be short and i want to be at these parties i'm like yeah. hey, this is tucson i'm kind of like a you know in small circles i'm a big deal and i don't <laughs> want to just be this you know dressed in a tux like fucking slinging cards guy anymore <laughs> right uh but i do it for my mom and the thing is what does your mom do she, she well she runs the company so so we're, we're gonna come down for the centurion thing we we're talking about and set up a massive casino and there'll be blackjack tables craps tables oh, wow. roulette and that's all for charity right derek has worked these before yeah yeah um Sometimes. yeah but the thing is the problem is with events like these and it's not just the centurions there's also like the 2030s club there's different organizations like this all over the state that i've worked with um, these are all like business owners, successful, you know, middle-aged white guys. And there's a little bit of entitlement there when, especially when the alcohol is involved. Mm -hmm. And it's my job to make sure they're doing their job. The volunteers for like a blackjack pit to make sure they're doing their job and not like cheating for the people and just giving out money. Because if they give out all the chips, then we don't have any chips. It creates chaos and it makes yeah. it unfair for the raffle. Uh, so you just try to get these people who are essentially volunteering. Mm -hmm. There's a group of them. And we'll always volunteer because we'll be short dealers because a lot of people drive down for Phoenix for this. Um, and so, so they'll be down there and they're just like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I can deal blackjack. And of course they have no clue how to deal blackjack. <laughs> and then they're just like giving out money. And then I'll just be like, Hey, uh, don't give out money. You know, because we're trying to raise money. So, you know, if they lose, they lose. And they're just like, yeah, whatever, fucker. Right. You know, and I'm going to do what I want. And yeah. I'm sitting there, right. Kind of like puffing my chest. It's like, now you're just being disrespectful. First off, I'm trying to raise money for sick kids. All right. right. That's a charity. Yeah. Sick kids is a charity. You want to be a dick and give this person chips when they got 25 on 21. And you're going to say, yeah, you could have a hundred dollar chip. Fuck sick kids. That's what you're saying, man. Yeah. You're saying fuck sick kids. <laughs> I'm not going to allow you That's to fuck sick cool. kids on my watch. Yeah. 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 I didn't, yeah. I didn't mention it. Yeah. I didn't mention any of that to them, of course. Yeah. Uh, when I was interviewing them. Yeah. But, uh, but that's essentially the, the situation I get myself in each and every time. And sometimes it gets confrontational or it's awkward. Uh, cause I don't necessarily back down. I'm a little yeah. stubborn on that and they don't back down either because they're just like, Hey dude, I probably made more than you made in a year and a month. And then you, you probably did even more reason why you need to listen to me now. <laughs> this is yeah. the only opportunity I got to flex. So fuck you <laughs> for the kids. All right. You think you subconsciously, that's why you made them wait 45 minutes in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, I wasn't that upset about it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is the first time that you guys are waiting on somebody else. Usually <laughs> doors open wide open for you, especially in this town. If you're successful, it's a small pond, really. Yeah. So you got the connections. I got a question for you. I, go for it. Are, the, the outro on your on your the song. Did you, did you sing that song? No, that's Ren and Stimpy. Oh, is that what it is? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th I thought it might, you might have wrote that and sang it because I was like, but you're, you're not afraid to scuffle and get in a scuffle. No, I know, but that's why that song was so fitting, too. Uh, mm -hmm. When And it was um, it was proposed to me back, you know, I'm going on 15 years now, but so like maybe at the beginning, first year, I was doing a show. Someone's like, hey, check this out. I thought of you. And I was like, there's the outro song. <laughs> Bam. Yeah, it's fitting. Yeah. It's fitting. Yeah. What about the I'm still a piece of garbage. That that I put together. That's a that's a sweep. Um, and I got from sound bites. Uh, so well, good job on that. Uh, that uh, that, what is it? The Texas song, or is it the um, that song you played this morning? The one you you made that? The AI, the, well, that's an AI song. Oh, really? I was like, dude, how'd you do such good quality production on that thing so fast? I know. And like, here's the thing. So Enrico just paid for this program, and I'm going to have to do it as well. And I, Derek, like, seriously, you got to check this site out. There's free credits for it. It's called sunu.ai. And we just, uh, Rico came across it just the other week. And um, and we started playing with it and started creating songs. And it literally creates songs within seconds. Wow. It gives you like 20 free credits to That's start off with. Artists are going to be gone huh, in the future. Yeah. So when I was talking to my buddy Johnny Congos from the band, he's like, it's over for songwriters. Unless you're coming up with shit that's so beyond uh, creatively original. Now AI can literally do your job in such a quick and creative way that it's. Gosh, it's we, we did that Sweet Tomato song. 
that was like a jingle that was like so good that we're like fucking we gotta sell this to sweet tomatoes dude <laughs> right like it was that good in fact i'll play you just a little snippet of it um real quick just to for refresh your memory All right. and let's see if you'll be able to hear this Rico, or derek sorry i'm just reading you're still derek i know your name <laughs> all right so here's a sweet tomato song in the heart of the desert a city so unique Oasis, a place where dreams could be. Yeah, can you hear? Yeah, I can hear. There's only one sweet tomatoes in Tucson. Sweet tomatoes is the name, a place that brings delight. With fresh greens and veggies, it's a foodie's pure delight. Sweet tomatoes in Tucson, the only one around. It's the only one around. Yeah. Yeah. It's Reggie, man. It's Reggie. Yeah. It is. From the soup bar, to the bakery. It's magic, it's the sweet yeah, so they cut that up a little bit. The <laughs> yeah, so that's it. So that song, that sweet tomato song, which we're gonna make a video to, by the way, because uh, we have the only sweet tomatoes in the country because they just reopened that. That came out. They they made that song, lyrics, beat, music, and vocals, less than fifteen seconds. No way. Boop, 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 bam. Wow. Jeez. And it was it wasn't you know I, I, oh, I, we're gonna I, get on the air here. Okay. All right. A lot of times you hear the uh, Rock the, One Two Point One KFMA. It's Beef Vegan presents. I'm here with Bam and Bella and Derek on the podcast broadcast, and I just replayed that Sweet Tomatoes uh, theme that we just uh, cur curated through AI within 15 seconds, and it's super catchy. But what are you saying, Bam? Oh, no, I was just saying how how, how uh, you hear a lot of the. I know there's a local company here that produces a lot of like, local. Um, songs for the businesses here and a lot of them are just like really awkward you know what i mean you know it's, but that that sounded really good <laughs> it's it's game over for, the, for them unfortunately in yeah. fact actually i could move in today and uh, and take away their business and and be able to do that all, literally with resources that we came across on the internet uh for free and uh, you know like i mean I'm, I'm gonna have to say i prefer hawk blocker the hawk blocker was the jam too but then that <laughs> that of course was uh you know somewhat ai curated as well because it came up with the lyrics doing chat gpt now we performed it our own special way but there was people who were thinking that when we were doing the rap gpt songs that it was essentially the program that i just played you they didn't even know that it was us performing those songs uh they thought it was ai taking our our voices and performing oh, okay. for us and i had to let people know like no we're we're performing this live on the air. Yeah. You know, like yeah. that's a thing. Uh, so well, Derek, uh, you look baffled. Yeah, what is what is that called? <laughs> what the <laughs> hawk blockers? Yeah. Well, that was the you when the, the hawks were swooping on people and you did the chat GPT rap song thing. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, you're but, talking no, about what the website that creates those songs? Yeah, because that was that was amazing with the beats and the drums and everything. Like, I know. I don't want to say it on air because I don't want yeah. everyone to use it. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. That's, <laughs> that's, fair. Why I was just, uh, that's our little uh, in-house in producer, if you will. Because now, think about this. And this is what I'm going to do. And I, I messed around this morning um, with the uh, Sylvester Stallone song. So there was a story that leaked in the uh, you know, rag bags that Sylvester Stallone was complaining on the set of Tulsa King that yeah, the extras like were too ugly. Right, and like, oh, hey, uh, well, uh, look at these extras in the bar. Uh, mm -hmm. They get beat with the ugly stick. Uh, says well, Sylvester what? Stallone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> said Sly Stallone. I know the irony and the fact that you know Tulsa, Oklahoma, is where that show was set. And I'm like, hey, it's Tulsa. You you got the nines of Tulsa. Unfortunately, they're LA twos. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> um, but I ended up taking that information, putting it into the website just a small little uh snippet and came up with sylvester stallone uh tulsa king calling extras ugly song and they gave me several different versions of it and uh if you want to hear one i'll share it with you you want to hear one yeah yeah, yeah. okay it. I thought it was good <laughs> yeah there you go it's it was called toxic skies uh and there was two different versions of it and uh let's see i'll play 
this one. Check it out. I should turn up. Just dream so best is so long, causing chaos. So it seems, creating a toxic environment, tripping with disdain, calling the extra zombie, driving them insane. Thought to wreck to deny, with a final film smile, but now we have a final smile, a toxic sky low, I can't believe it, man, I can't believe it. But you made it. Well, in a way I did, uh, you know, and uh, I'm going to read you some of these lyrics. So again, the information I put in was Sylvester Stallone was, uh, you know, was accused of creating a toxic environment by calling extras ugly. Uh, this is the lyrics that it came up with. In the land of Tulsa King, where the extras dream, Sylvester Stallone causing chaos, so it seems, uh, creating a toxic environment, dripping with disdain, calling the extras ugly, driving them insane. Goes into the chorus, and the chorus is toxic skies, Filled with anger, filled with lies in the rock and alternative scene, which it was a stupid line from AI because I said I wanted a rock and alternative. Uh, we despise uh, the toxicity of power, the to toxicity of fame in this toxic world. Who will we blame? <laughs> you know, and you're just like, Again. yeah, Very in well. 15 seconds, it came up with that. And there was two versions. The other version sounded like this. I like this one. Chaos. Yeah, so, so there you go. I mean, it's a trip, and I try to do Florida Man song, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm still working on that, and I'm gonna end up paying money uh, for eight dollars a month. I'm like, I'm gonna suck it up, I have to pay <laughs> right. for that because, good. yeah, this is, this, is, this, is, this is dropping the book, it's nothing compared mm -hmm. to the time you would spend on producing that for yourself, you know. Oh, are you kidding me? As yeah. far as radio, and Derek and I have been doing radio for a long time, I'm going way back, right? 15 years. Yeah. Uh, to have this resource, if we started uh, a game changer, we had yeah. to go the old school way, writing and performing poorly. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to wrap things up with your beef tip after these words, but you can join the conversation on the podcast broadcast, youtube.com slash beef vegan. Clear. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I love that. The, um, you know, the mid journey, the AI images that now that you could do. Crazy. So you're like and literally having an in-house department that like say Howard Stern employees mm -hmm. where he employs like a hundred employees or whatever mm -hmm. the case, all doing certain things. Yeah. Now somebody at my level of income, which is down here can have his own team based off of these right, uh, right. programs. So and, uh, I'm an artist, you know, like with the visual arts and I mean, like all different types of media, you know, strip, spray, spray cans, oil, whatever. And in the, in the images that the AI can come up with is just mind boggling. Yeah. And it, it, it's like, it pisses me off because like, it's I like how, how can, how can we have any, there's no competition. Like it's over. <laughs> I know. And, and that's the thing too. It, it, it threatens uh, this job. You know, and a lot of people in this industry as mm -hmm. well, AI, with the advancement of AI and how uh, complex and good it's getting, there are big companies that are just like, oh, well, we don't need to pay fucking people to introduce Celine Dion on the radio. You right. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that uh, my obscurity, insanity, and ignorance is also my key to longevity in this industry yeah those are all nice words though i right. said uh, yeah, yeah, pretty good <laughs> Derek's just seeing me kind of blank out throughout the morning where i'm just like oh, oh. It's, it's, he's on it now yeah it's my consultant's <laughs> fault for calling me smart the other day now i'm coming in like check out the big brain on brand yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even why would you even touch an abortion argument uh with a fucking 10 foot pole uh yeah. but yeah, yeah i was surprised I, know. I was like, yes. Well, you know, it, it would be irresponsible not to mention it whatsoever, even though our goal for the show is to be like a distraction and be comedy and stuff. But when it's something like this, it's so large and it's yeah. their face and it affects us all. Uh, and I know 
uh, you know, in this, this audience uh, we're listening to, they're both sides of the aisle too. Right. And I get a lot of people who wouldn't listen to Frank because he's so liberal that listen to me. And so um, I'm trying to unify people right. uh, and, you know, bring them together. with like, what, what are things that we can all agree on mm -hmm. as opposed to falling for the, the, the trick or the bait of division dividing us because all these like talking points that get people so angry at each other oh, yeah. the, it's all just mental war warfare they're just yeah. fucking with us you know what i mean and so i don't believe any of it and and then just like let's put that bullshit aside and let's talk about the things that we all can agree on right yeah. right yeah yeah and you can deliver yeah like, deliver your opinion without being like you're not being an asshole or anything right exactly right. like indignant about it and like i'm fucking so smart and you're so stupid kind of uh approach yeah. is what i was used to hearing all the time uh on my last show uh which you know which i hated it frank he always talked down to you man i know i know because he was uh he was threatened by me exactly and, and secure about it and uh, and the thing about frank is as intelligent as he is and he is intelligent Mm -hmm. uh, but I will say, and I have said to him, he lacks the critical thinking because he'll go straight off of what it was, uh, what he reads, and he'll he'll read that as gospel instead of like thinking about what the you know, uh, what about like say COVID is the example where mm -hmm. I saw a lot of this. Okay, so my critical thinking, and I end up being right on this, and I and I feel kind of good about it. But this, he's just like, nope, it's over, doomsday, whatever, we're fucking dying. I'm like, actually, we just got to ride out. The beginning of this because every new virus that is introduced to this world you know obviously is a very potent dangerous virus mm -hmm. and then every virus is still a living organism mm -hmm. and every living organism evolves to survive and that means like just like the flu or the cold that we have today they're all evolved viruses that don't kill the host because they don't want to kill the host so they can bounce from host to host and survive and so like that was that was theories and uh, just about, um, you know, biology and and viruses in general. So that have been stated before. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, this if we ride it out, there's a good chance that this will evolve to be less uh, of a dangerous virus. And then, of course, we've all gotten COVID by now, probably several times. over. I haven't, I haven't not, not no, uh, no vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm COVID free, man. I just don't leave the house. You might, yeah, you might have gotten it, not even knowing right. it, right? But but anyway, so that was the case. And then he was the type of guy who who literally wear like two masks inside his car by himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. swear to God, I, I see like him do people, it. <laughs> make fun of, we make fun of people that do that, <laughs> right? And it's like, well, you know, that. even like even the dumbest of person could realize like if there's no germs around you, you know, if it's not like just in the air that we breathe when no one's around us. <laughs> We should be safe inside your car and you're wearing two masks. I mean, it just shows like the the not even paranoia. That's just stupid because like what the fuck is going to be in your car by yourself? <laughs> so, yeah, to, to be fair, a mask inside your car is not a horrible idea because I mean, yeah, and uh, I'm not anti mask, you know, and I when I see people with masks and uh, Lindsay still wears a mask. Yeah, I don't want to get sick either, like any kind of sickness. And in people in Japan, that's been the culture of Asian culture for decades and generations. Uh, if they get a cold, they wear a mask as uh, being polite so they don't pass it on to somebody else. Wow. Yes. That, that, that's yeah. actually, why, why can't we do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, because, you know, in our society, we look at somebody and say, huh, pussy. Yeah, and we're right, like, no, right. I'm trying to be nice. What's wrong with you, man? Yeah, let's get on there. We didn't market it that way, is why we didn't. We should have marketed it that we way tried from the get-go. I know, but we're not. We're back on the air, so we can't. We can't talk mask stuff on the air. You know, it gets people mad. There, Derek. It's rock on. Where's a mask? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure that you guys uh, came in, uh, Bam and Bella. Uh, now, Bella, she did give me a heads up, Bam. You hmm. were uh, telling Bella that I should sign her boobs when I met you guys at the Rialto. Did I say that? Yeah. Yeah, you <laughs> said did. that. <laughs> hmm. You said that. Dang. I thought <laughs> tequila. <laughs> I thought it would only be fair and right, uh, since it was your first time on the show, that we end the show with me signing your boobs, Bam. Right yeah, on, I gotta sign it. your boobs. I think uh, turnabout is fair play, and uh, you know, I think uh, this, uh, it will be a great way to uh, signify this appearance. Right uh, on. First, Benny. Now, uh, shirt off or what? 
Yeah, I mean, I gotta see the boobs, bro. I mean, that's how it works. Yeah, look at that. Oh, look at that well, we canvas. Just, we just went viral on the YouTube stream. Bam, showing nips. <laughs> I know I got like a sharpie. I'll give you a nice little signature on your boob here uh, to wrap up the podcast. And uh, yes, you gonna put a little steak next to it, like your tattoo. No, I'm not an artist. I'll have AI do that and then print it up as uh, one of those lick and stick tattoos. There you go. Yes. Yeah, see? That's what we're working on. Uh, but unfortunately, that's all the time we have for the show. So Thanks we will, for having us. Of course. Like quick. Awesome. I know. It, it goes by fast. fast. Dang. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate everyone uh, tuning in. It's the first time, but not the last time. Uh, Bam and Bella, I appreciate you guys coming in and being yeah, my guests. My, my pleasure, man. That's just fun. <laughs> yes, and uh, Derek. I was, uh, I was surprised. Like, what, why the heck do you want us on the show? Like, what, 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 what do we do? <laughs> you guys are personalities, and then when I met you, uh, you know, you guys are good people. So, you know, well, this, sorry, this show. Sorry, interrupt for Derek. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. This show is, a, you know, a community show, a personality show. So, like I said, this is the introduction. I told you. Told you. Yeah. This like, is, she, yeah. she was nervous as heck. She was like, I was like, baby, just you gotta be yourself. He obviously liked this because we we're yourself, whatever. <laughs> Absolutely, right? Yeah. And so this is just the beginning of the story of Bam and Bella on our show. And uh, you know, uh, welcome to the family. Thank you, know, you you've man. been a part Appreciate of it, it. for I feel a while. Like I've, I've been following you the whole time. Just let you know. Right? No, no, I <laughs> see you every time I turn around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? <laughs> all right, let's wrap it. things up here on the FM side. I'm gonna sign, uh, sign Bam's boobs on uh, the podcast broadcast. We'll be back tomorrow with more tickets to give away. Till then, Robin Nash is up next. Enjoy the rest of your day. Drive safe, fried safe, and as always, rock local. Later. Shirts off. Shirts off, dude. <laughs> Upon the side of beef. Soon will come and end to all your grief. Get my sharpie here. But if you've been mean or kind of bad, I will knock out all your teeth. <laughs> this is going to be so hot. Right. <laughs> yeah, let's see this. Blinded by the light. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Like Luckily, I got a red sharpie that will work here. Oh, shit. <laughs> And this is just like, this will be, now I know oh, it's like the sign Bella's boobs too, so. Hell yeah. Boom. Word. Thank you. Show it off to the stream. Show it off to the stream. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah! Thanks, man. I'll re- I'll cherish this forever. <laughs> Work, dude, it was good seeing you on the stream. Hey, I'll, I'll hit you up hey, later, dude. dude. Everyone else, thank you guys for watching. We're gonna end this stream uh, right now, but we'll be back tomorrow morning. You know. <laughs>